Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. We have a problem in this country, okay? Young men are going out and committing what has been unfortunately popularized as mass shootings, all right? You see it in the news every single time it happens. It's terrible. It's unbearable. Um, and the political so-called leaders have no solutions for us, okay? I, I read a statistic the other day. I don't know how true it is, so go ahead and check your facts on your own. But I read that 25 out of 26, or was it 26 out of 27, either way, mass shooters come from single mother households. Single mother households. Now, I can already see the single mothers in my audience getting enraged. This is fake news. This is an outrage. All right, no, all right. Maybe it is. Maybe it is fake news. Nevertheless, the title of my message today is this. How to stop mass shootings by building stronger families and stronger communities. Now, I was listening to an older gentleman the other day um, tell me about how he lives in his upper class uh, white suburban community. And how he was saying how there is no crime. You know, it's a gated community, low, very low crime, if not, if any. Um, everybody there is wealthy, well-to-do, you know. And he was saying how, you know, he takes his kid out in the stroller and walks around the neighborhood. And, and everybody stays in their homes, you know. Every, it's like, he was saying it was almost as if everybody's afraid to come out of their house. You know, like, like they don't interact e with each other. There's no community, you know. Um, now, if you don't see a problem with that, <clears throat> write something in the comment section below. I'll make a whole nother separate video about it um, explaining that topic. But right now, getting on with my message, okay? What prompted me to make this message today? Well, in, in part, it was the recent shootings, you know, in Texas and um, I forget the other ones. You know, it's, it's hard for me to keep up. There's so many nowadays, right? But anyway, recently I've been seeing a lot um, of what appears to be a rise of single mothers in this country, especially, you know, in, in my own local hometown, you know what I'm seeing it right with my very own eyes, my own family members, my own friends, my own people in my community, single moms. It's like an epidemic. Okay, so they've either, uh, and these aren't single moms because their husband died. These aren't widows. These are single moms by choice. These are single moms who are either divorced or separated with their husbands or their boyfriends, their baby fathers, what have you. Okay. Um, so what we're seeing today in society now is a rise of bastard children. And, and for those of you who um, get offended by the word bastard, you know, that simply just means a child without his father. Okay. It, it, it's not a derogatory term. It's a descriptive term. A child without a father is called a bastard. Okay. So, this is the thing. Um, there aren't... The, it, this isn't to say that there aren't legitimate cases where the father is unfit. You know, I could understand that. But, <clears throat> from my observation, I can easily, right off the top of my head, name for you three people. Three good men. Who I know personally. Who have been discarded by women. And I can tell you that the woman had no good reason to do so. And also from even my own personal experience, you know, the woman that I loved, whom I was trying to start a family with, she left me for no good reason. Now, this isn't to say they didn't have a reason, okay? They all have a reason. They just don't have a good reason, okay? There's a difference. Now... On top of everything else, you know, you can argue this is all by design, you know, the powers that be, Agenda 21, the New World Order, whatever conspiracy you want to um, think of, and all that stuff. You can argue, you know, this is what they're pushing. This is the agenda. But putting conspiracy theories aside, that because that's out of the scope of this message, my point is, and I want to dial this in real tight here, I notice that all the single moms are posting pictures of themselves with their children on, on um, social media. 
trying to portray themselves as good single moms, happy single moms. They're doing a great job raising these kids. But what do we see? 26 out of 27 mass shooters come from single mother households. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say that. <clears throat> anyway, uh, you know, they're but they're posting these pictures on social media. And what's the uh, obvious thing? There's no father around. There's no father in the picture, literally. And the Lord gave me this message the other day, and, and, I, and I have to share it with you all today. Um, and the message is this. Women are not equipped to raise children on their own. They're not capable of doing it. Now, the same can also be said for a man. However, with single moms, it's an, it's an absolute disaster. Single mothers are the worst. Let me explain. And I'll illustrate my point this way. Because um, I think it drives the point home. Maybe you could understand it this way. And, and this is not to bash women. Okay? This is not to say that there's something defective with women. That's not what I'm saying. But to illustrate my point, consider this. You, you will never see... A military force, a strong military force of any nation marching their women out on the front lines to do battle and, and expect a victory. Okay? Now, this is not to say that women cannot fight. Am I right? You know, nobody's saying that a woman cannot fight and pick up a gun and, def you know, defend her country. But a woman, an all-woman made army on the front lines expected to fight a battle expected to fight warriors expected to fight the barbarians and you know everybody coming at us no this will this is never how society is run this is never how countries have been established um never been the case in history um you know, and we see that in the movies being pushed down our throats nowadays is, is uh, all these superhero women and, and women can, uh, women are powerful and strong. But, you know, that's out of the scope of this message, too. Um, I mean, this whole dynamic is like trying to put a tennis player, a, a male tennis player against the heavyweight boxing champion of the world. No contest, right? No contest. Not to say that this tennis player is not a competent fighter. You know, he could fight, I'm sure. But versus the heavyweight champion? No, 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 no. I mean, this guy lives and breathes fighting. He lives and breathes boxing every day. He's training every day. You're not. You're gonna be no contest for him. And, and and in the same way, remember, this is not to bash women. I'm saying, I'm saying, all this to explain why it doesn't work, and how we can fix it. Because women are incapable. When I say incapable, I'm saying you are not equipped. Just like a woman is not equipped to go out and fight a war. You know, you don't put massive amounts of women on the front lines of battle. You know, you can't you can't expect a single mom to succeed. And I'm going to explain to you why in this video. Stick around. Now, first thing, a few good things about women. Women are great nurturers. Men cannot nurture a child like a woman can, you know. I mean, even from our physical bodies, you know, women have breasts so they can actually feed the child, right? They can care for the child. They can love their infant babies, take care of them, um, babysit them, clothe them, uh, bathe them, um, change their diapers. And, you know, the list goes on and on of the, of the beautiful things that a woman can do. And this is also why, you know, women who don't have any children yet love dogs you know when i go out and walk around the park i always see women walking around with their dogs you know i <laughs> um women love dogs right why is that because they're like a little baby they're like a little baby and i remember the uh the woman i was um wanting to start a family with she had a little dog and she even straight up told me she's like this is like my baby she even called it baby <laughs> because she doesn't have a baby, but she still wants to, she has this motherly instinct. She, you know, mothers, women want to do that. They should be doing that. They should be having kids. And we're not having kids. That's another video, the whole abortion thing. But, you know, and back on the scope here. Why is this? Because at a certain age, a child will be able to make their own decisions. Okay. 
and inevitably, in the, as the child gets older, and, and you know, I don't know that much about children, you know, what age they start acting up, uh, maybe it's five, six, I don't know, but at some point, they will start to act up and rebel, challenge the, uh, the, the parent's authority, they'll get out of line, they'll start, when, you know, when they learn to talk, they'll start talking back, and things like that, and, and, and that's what the man's job in the household has always been. Is, is when your dad gets home, oh, you're going to be in big trouble. Why? Because dad's going to come home, take off his belt, and let you have it, right? That's the man's job. Man's job is to set the rules, set the tone of the household, and apply discipline when necessary. And I spoke this briefly on my update yesterday about how men are to discipline their wives and their children. That's our role. And without a man around, the child grows up without boundaries, without discipline, and, and, and especially with feminism nowadays, which is a lie of the devil, wicked lie of the devil, telling women that they're equal with men, that you could do it just the same as a man. No, you can't do it. You cannot discipline your child like a man can. Why? Because a, a child looks at a man and, and fear gets stricken into his eyes just from the, the, the deep voice of the man. The, the loud, the countenance of his character will strike fear alone into a man. You know, we don't, we're not, our, our bodies aren't soft like a woman. Our voices aren't soft like a woman, okay? We have strength. We have masculinity, okay? And on a side note, you know, because I experienced this in my relationship um, with my woman, you know, anytime I would try to discipline my woman, you know, she would rebel against me. She would rebel against this discipline. And, and you know, I would get frustrated because, you know, I had no way to discipline her. No way. And sometimes, uh, you know, I'd, I'd be like uh, against the ropes and I'd go tell her parents. I'd go, I'd go to her dad and, you know, they do. They basically just laugh at me. They'd laugh at me. The father would be like, dude, I don't even discipline her. What makes you think you can discipline her? Okay, so, you know, I pinpointed this huge problem in our society. And it's not women. It's not women. It's men. Yep. It's us men, you know, and we and we can blame uh, the problem on the women all day long. Oh, it's oh, it's her problem. She's out of control. She cheated on me. You don't understand what she did behind my back. She lied to me. All this, that, and the other. And you're right on all accounts. I am not going to argue with you. You know, women in our generation are out of control. Out of control. It's I mean, it's self. It's almost self evident right now, right? But when you see a child acting a fool in public, acting like a little brat in public, who do you blame? Do you blame the child? No. You look at the parents. You look at the mom. You look at the dad and you say, they're to blame. I mean, not to condone the child's behavior, but you're looking at the parent who's supposed to know better and say, I'm blaming you. Well, in the same way, our women in our culture, in our society, are acting up. And that's not to say what they're doing is okay. But who's to blame? Us men. Take some responsibility, why don't you? You know, we aren't setting the tone. We aren't setting the rules. We aren't disciplining the women. We are sitting back and letting it happen. It's happening in the churches. It's happening in um, the schools. It's happening in your house. Your own relationships. Fathers are letting their daughters go out there and dress like whores at a young age. You know, I, I walk around in public. I see girls as young as 11, 12 years old. They're already makeup. You the little yoga pants, the little tight little mini skirts. What are you doing? Letting them have boyfriends at, as, as young as age 13. Letting them whore themselves around, losing, losing their virginity age 15 to some guy who just, who, who doesn't care. He just, he just wants to have a fling. He just wants to, uh... Um, I've heard it said, well, I'm not going to use that derogatory term, but anyway, I can go on and on, right? And us boyfriends, us husbands, what do we do? We let our w women get away with way too much, way too much. And we think we're doing a, a favor. We think we're being Mr. Nice Guy. Wow. Well, let me tell you something. I had to learn the hard way, okay? I had to learn the hard way. And part of the reason my relationship did fall apart was because of me. You know, I'm not ashamed to take the blame, like I said. My responsibility, right? 
falls on me. It's on my shoulders. I compromised my own values, okay? Because the woman, she told me things um, that she wanted different than what I had said and already set, set the pace for, right? And she said, no, 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 I don't want to do that thing. Oh, sex before marriage is fine? Or she's, you know, she would say sex before marriage is fine, Sean, even though you don't believe in that. Using contraception is fine, Sean, even though you don't believe in that. Me dressing like a whore out in public is fine, Sean, even though you don't believe in that. Well, it's not fine. I'm here to tell you it's not fine. And because we want a relationship, we want a family so bad, we compromise our values. And that's not to say that having and wanting a family is a bad thing. But the things we ought to cherish, our morals, our values, we need to guard with all our strength. You know, but we know that if we put our foot down, if we, if we, if we do not compromise, the woman's going to walk away and she'll going to go find somebody who will, right? So we're afraid. We don't want her to leave. We cave in. We compromise. But the reality is a strong man does not compromise on his values, does not compromise, does never caves in. Just remember, like, like in the, in, like in the Bible, um, the, one of the first stories in the Bible, Jesus, go, Jesus goes into the wilderness alone and he's tempted by the devil and the de and the devil tempts him and says, Hey, just, uh, bow down to me and worship me and I'll give you all of these things in the world. And Jesus ke just keeps on saying, no, no, I will not cave. And Jesus never caved, never caved. And, and he said, I will not surrender to your terrorist threats. Satan get behind me. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds at the mouth of God. Now, I don't negotiate with terrorists, okay? Oh, well, the woman's going to say, ah, well, I'm not going to give you any. I'm not going to give you this, that, and the other. I'm going to break up with you. I'm going to go find another guy. Well, okay, go. Because if I have to sell my soul to be with you, if I have to sell my soul to gain the world, then it's not worth it. It's not worth it. I don't negotiate with terrorists anymore. No, this message goes deeper than you guys think. So, but let me try to refocus and get back on track here, right? Let me break down why having a, a mom and a dad is so important to stop mass shootings. Why single mother households who, who kick their father out of the picture or kick the husband out of the picture is not of God. It's displeasing God. God hates it. God will judge this country because of it. And, you'll, and you're seeing it right now. That's why so many men are going MGTOW. Because they're seeing the judgment of God. They're seeing us. We're failing miserably at following this book. <sighs> Getting into the message. And I'll try to lighten it up so I don't sound so angry. Okay. Um, but this message is important. Anyway. Um, remember in the book of Genesis, right at the, when God created man, he said, he said, I'm going to create man in my own image in the image of God created. He man, or maybe I'm misquoting that. Anyway, go look it up. <laughs> the woman comes from man, right? But man is made in God is God's image in the same way in the household, the family unit represents that structure, the father, son, and the Holy spirit right? A woman's submission to her husband pictures our submission to God, okay? Just like Jesus submitted to God the Father, okay? When, when, when a child sees his authority figure, his parent, um, and, and, the, and, the, and the authority figure is a single mom, meaning the authority figure is a woman, this corrupts the child's mind because the human mind was not meant, we were not designed by God to submit to women's authority. Men are supposed to be in authority. Why? Because it pictures God the Father, not God the Mother. God is not a woman. God the Father is a man. He is an authority. The human uh, mind will reject a woman in authority. I mean, yeah, when a child is growing up, he has no choice but to accept the woman's authority. But let me explain. Because all, I mean, all the way back in the Genesis, the Bible says a woman's desire will be for her husband, and he will re rule over thee. Think about that. A woman's desire will be for her husband. Why? Because she desires somebody to rule over her. She desires somebody to be the boss, to, uh, to set the rules, to set the tone, 
to discipline wrongdoings, um, to settle disputes, to be a protector, a provider. All the way back in Genesis, but, but how is the man ruling these days? How are you going to rule your family? How are you ruling your, your, your family right now? Are you going to allow your daughter or your girlfriend to, to, to be a slut? To dress like, to dress like a whore? Or, or, or are you going to guard her and guide her in the ways of the Lord and teach her and discipline her when she falls out of line? You see, if a man is not fully submitted to God and obeying God's commandments, then the woman will just mirror you and she will not submit to you because you are not submitting to the father. And then the child will see that and he will not submit and, and everything falls apart. See what I'm saying? But I also want to explain this, okay? A young boy who grows up with a single mom, the single mom will condition him to be a simp later on in his life. How does this happen? Well, because the woman, the mom, will tell the young boy, hey, I'm going to give you love and affection. I'm going to love you and hug you and kiss you and give you all the affection that you desire as long as you obey me. So what does the boy learn? The boy learns, well, I want mom's love and affection. I want her to love me, so I have to obey her. Well, she just became your authority figure. Problem is, what happens later in life? What happens when he gets older? What happens when he starts to rebel against mom? And mom says, get in line, listen to me. Well, what that leads to is later on in life, the boy will see a girl he likes and he'll buy her flowers. He'll open the door for her. He'll buy her nice things and, and think, well, if I just obey her, she'll love me. Because that's what happened with me and my mom. Right? Wrong. <laughs> wrong. That's dead wrong. That's, that's going to turn you into a simp. So if you were raised by a single mom, you could understand your psychology. You were conditioned to be a simp. So don't beat yourself up for this. It's out of your control. That's not how this sh dynamic needs to work, okay? The, the, your girlfriend is not your mom, okay? Your mom, unfortunately, taught you uh, this wrong way. She conditioned you to be this way, okay? So you have to understand this and rework it out in your head, okay? So what happens is these boys grow up and they get no respect from women, okay? No love from the opposite sex because the, the girls they're just as screwed up as they are because they were probably raised by a single mom too and the, and the boys get enraged and they get angry and, and because they're not getting the love and the respect that they that they think that they should deserve it's like hey i opened the door for you i i did everything i was supposed to do i bought you flowers i took you out i did this and that and the other and and and, and instead you repay me by cheating on me and and some boys can't handle it and, 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 and because they, they go to society for help. They go to their pastors. They go to their churches. They go to their teachers and their counselors and their, and their political leaders and say, Hey, I'm enraged. Something is wrong. I'm doing what I was told to do and, and, and something's broken. So what happens? Instead of society helping them out and saying, Hey, look, listen, you were conditioned the wrong way. Your, your, your job is not to... Uh, um, to pander to women. Your job is not to win their love by buying them things. But instead, they shame these boys. They mock them and say, oh, you're a bunch of losers. Something's wrong with you. You just can't get a woman. You're mentally ill. So they lash out. They commit mass shootings. Some of them is unfortunate because what they really need is they need somebody to love them instead they're getting mocked they're getting teased they're getting bullied they're getting made fun of by the opposite sex getting laughed at so let's take us let's, let's take a psychological look at the young girls because because the young girls are just are getting destroyed just as bad as the young boys don't think it's just the young boys going out there and committing mass murders young young girls i'd argue even worse listen to this see the woman the mom of the the single mom of the young girl when she's a child and there's no father figure around 
you know, everything's fine in the beginning, in, in the infant stages, the child stages, but as soon as that child starts rebelling, like every child does, something's going to shape up with that girl. The, the woman cannot discipline that girl like a man can. A man can't come in and say, hey, no daughter of mine's going to go out dressed like that. Uh-uh. Go change your clothes right now. Oh, oh, you're going to argue with me? Then you're staying in your room. Right? And the mother is supposed to back up the father and say, you listen to your father. Right? That's the mother's role. The mother's role is to back up the father. The father's role is to lay down the law and discipline you if you disobey. But what happens in a single mother household trying to raise a daughter? The young girl grows up. She acts up like all children do. And what happens when the mom tries to discipline the girl? The girl laughs at the mom. Jokes at the mom. Says, I'm more prettier than you. I'm younger than you. I can go out there and get male attention. I can attract more male attention than you can, mom. <laughs> so I'm superior to you. So, so you have a bunch of girls out there who are puffed up in their pride and their ego. They have no authority figure. And remember, Genesis said what? Her desire is for her husband, and he will rule over her. So both the mother and the daughter both desire a male to rule over them. But the daughter saying, hey, I can get a man easier than you, mom, because I'm younger and prettier. I'm the same thing as you, but I'm a younger, prettier version of you. <laughs> so I'm superior than you. So what... So what you have is a mom and a daughter now competing with each other for male attention. Competing for that male rulership. So what ends up happening is the girl ends up resenting men. That's why, that's why they call it a girl with daddy issues. You know, daddy never loved me. Daddy was never around. So she seeks that male attention, her desire. But she does it in the wrong way because she never was disciplined to learn how to do it the right way. So she flaunts her body and her curves and she posts her pictures on Instagram and, and, and Facebook and all this stuff and gets the likes and all that stuff. And he, she flaunts it in her mom's face like, ha, see, I can get male attention way better than you, so I don't need to listen to you either. And after she sleeps around with guy after guy and, 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 and she's conditioning herself to just be used. And, and this message is getting long, so I'm definitely going to have to break this up into two videos. Um, but I'll, I'll finish this little segment here. So, anyway, this young girl grows up and she, and she never fully understands, Hey, why don't these other guys love me? I'm giving them my body. I'm giving them everything I need. You know, same thing. It's like the reverse simp. You know what I mean? Like, I'm opening my legs for them. <laughs> I'm getting down on my knees for them, quite literally. And, but really what she's looking for is she's looking for daddy. Because she never learned how to submit to dad. But, but your boyfriend's not your dad. Just like for the young boys, your girlfriend's not your mom. It doesn't work that way. Daddy doesn't love you, uh... Daddy's not going to love you like these guys love you. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're trying to do it the wrong way. And she she was never disciplined by, by her dad. So she gets into relationship after relationship and keeps running into the same brick wall. Wondering, how come none of these guys love me? Because they're not your dad. <laughs> and, 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 and the second the boyfriend or the husband comes in and he tries to exercise his authority, discipline her, she rebels. And goes back to her old ways and says, well, I'm going to just treat you like mom treated dad. <laughs> you know, I'm going to scrap you. I'm going to dump you. I'm going to disrespect you. And she thinks this is acceptable behavior because she's been conditioned this way. And I hope this message you're receiving this because it's a lot of information I'm trying to pack in in a short time. And, you know, really what I need to do is do a whole lecture. <laughs> I need to do a series on this. But anyway... Um, this leads to the massive amount of abortion. The, the, the woman's going to use contraception because she's sleeping with guy after guy after guy, trying to get that validation, right? Trying to get, um, the male attention, getting in her fix of her desire, of her husband's approval, of her boyfriend's approval. But she's going about it the wrong way. And basically, ultimately, she's usurping authority over the man. 
when, when the woman is using birth control and she's committing abortions against you, she's usurping your authority. She's saying, no, you're not in charge. I'm in charge. But remember, God said the man is in charge. The woman is to submit to the man. But when the woman's using birth control, she's saying, no, I'm in charge. You submit to me. I tell you when I get pregnant. I, I make the rules. I'm the boss. I'm the authority. No, that's against God. He's going to reject that, and he will not bless your marriage. Your marriage will fail. This leads to the massive amount of abortions we said. Um, I already said that. Sorry. I'm telling you guys right now, if your wife's on birth control, she's usurping your authority. She already doesn't cut your balls off. You might as well get rid of her. Okay? You got a serious problem. Okay? But anyway, I, I digress. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut the video here. I'm going to go on to part two because uh, this video is important. And you're not going to want to miss part two. So stick around um, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this message up. It's going to be a long message, but you're going to want to hear the rest of it. So stick around. I'll be right back.